Hi everyone, it's Erie County Executive Mark Polencars with another COVID-19 update for you. We uh, are going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday now. So we have a, a lot of information to provide uh, that we received in the last few days. Uh, pleased to be joined by Karen Gambino from Deaf Access Services. You will see her in the box uh, as she provides the American Sign Language for those that uh, have a hearing disability. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the continued good work with regards to the uh, social distancing, the physical distancing. We believe a lot of the positives we're seeing in our community with regards to the stabilization of cases, as I will go into, is a direct result of people following proper distancing guidelines. And it's very important that we continue to follow these so we can address this issue, reduce the hospitalizations, and reduce deaths as much as possible. Uh, as a reminder, the information that is provided is as valid as when it was inputted into the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and this is an evolving situation, and I'll talk a little bit about that in just one moment as we uh, talk a little bit about cases and testing as we have some important information that was received just before uh, we went on air. But uh, for the latest information, you can always go to our website and uh, certainly uh, for all kinds of information, including the frequently asked question pages, go to our website at www.erie.gov slash COVID-19, and you'll find tremendous amount of information there. Uh, the Erie County Public Health Lab testing criteria, as was discussed on Monday, we have increased and expanded testing to any symptomatic individual. So if you have symptoms of COVID-19, which include fever, uh, a persistent cough, shortness of breath, but also can include chills, uh, headaches, and you can find a lot of information on our website or talk to your personal care physician. Or a physician. But if you have any of those tests or any of those symptoms, I, I should say, you can get tested. Uh, sample collection is by appointment only. There is no walk-in opportunity through the Erie County Department of Health or our partners, including Kaleida Health, uh, if you have symptoms, you should call our COVID-19 hotline at 716-858-2929. Option one you press is for uh, general questions. If you are ill but have a health care provider, you uh, push option two. If you are ill but do not have a health care provider, uh, you push option three. And then if you are a health care provider, uh, you push option four, so we are providing expanded testing to all individuals who have symptoms of COVID-19 so we can uh, get a better idea of what's happening in the general population, not just essential workers like we had recently done. Uh, just remind everybody that if you do get tested, whether it's through the Erie County Department of Health, Kaleida Health, ECMC, Catholic Health Systems, a doctor's offices, or the Walmart testing site that's out there, you buy order of the Commissioner of Health have to remain in isolation until you receive your test results. Uh, if you're going to get tested because you're symptomatic, the assumption is you are actually have COVID-19. So if you get tested, you have to stay in isolation until you get your test results. And depending on where you get your test results, it may be a week to 10 days, especially if you're going through one of the private labs. So we want people to understand if you are sick and you get tested, you can't go about your normal business. If you went to the Walmart site and you decided I want to go in and go shopping at Walmart, you can't. As soon as you get tested, you will get an isolation order from the Commissioner of Health saying you have to stay in isolation. Uh, you may be eligible for paid leave from our, and there's resources through the New York State Department of Labor as well as the U.S. Department of Labor. But if you are working, that is, or you're watching a, a minor one and you have to stop from work. But uh, I want people to understand that this is serious. If you uh, get tested, you have to go into isolation. Now, important information on cases, deaths, and hospitalizations. As of uh, 2 p.m., there were 2,353 total positive cases, and you can see the breakdown. 55% of those are male, 45% female. Now, when I talked about how this is a rapidly evolving situation, uh, remember how we talked about how we were waiting for a number of days worth of reports from Quest that were not being received not only by Erie County, but other counties in New York State. Well, approximately two o'clock, we got about a thousand cases that came in. Uh, I should say uh, test results, they're not positive cases. A thousand uh, test results came in from Quest, dating all the way back to last Thursday. 
Our Department of Health is going through uh, them right now and notifying individuals, but it's our un or my understanding that they believe there's about 150 positive cases in those 1,000 uh, results. Those 150 cases are not included in the 2,353 total positive cases. Uh, that was as of 2 p.m. As of 2.15, we got those results and we found out that there was about another 150 cases. When we, they, it is fully confirmed and the individuals have been notified, uh, we will then include that later today on an update with regards to all cases that are positive. Uh, uh, 177 people have died as of yesterday evening. Uh, I do not have an update on death reports. That usually comes a little later in the day. We're doing those once a day. But 177 people have died. All of them were confirmed cases prior to their death. Uh, there are no presumptive positive cases included in the 177. Uh, there were 15 more deaths yet we reported on yesterday, and I certainly offer my deepest condolences to the friends and family members of those who, who deceased. Uh, I had a few people post on my Facebook page in the comments that they lost a loved one, one lost a mother, another one lost a brother. Deepest condolences, this is serious, this is real, this is not fake, and uh, people unfortunately are dying because of contracting the coronavirus here in Erie County. And then with regards to the hospital data, uh, the hospital report as of 420, we get it uh, late yesterday, and it was for the day before, there were 243 individuals that were hospitalized. 114 of those were in ICU and 93 of those had an airway assist. And you can see the latest chart uh, on hospitalizations. Uh, we have pretty much seen for about a two week period right now uh, that ICUs and as well as intubations have stayed stable. That's a very good sign. That's the sign we need to see. I'd prefer to see it go down, but at least we're not growing. We are seeing a tiny bit of little growth uh, with regards to all cases over the last uh, few days. But the positive that we're seeing is that we haven't had a tremendous amount of growth. And uh, of the cases, approximately one half of them are ICU. Uh, and of those, they're really not growing. So uh, that is a good sign. It is not, does not mean that we've uh, peaked. We may be upwards on the, on the trend line, but flattening. Uh, we may be flattened uh, to the point where we're, we're sort of hitting a peak, but we don't know how long the peak will last. When you flatten the curve, remember, if the curve goes like this, uh, that's a bad sign. That means that there's a lot of people that are getting hospitalized, they're getting sick at the same time, and, uh, and dying. If the curve goes like this, it's a smoother curve, that's a better sign, but it also lasts longer. So the, the, the peak that goes up like this and comes down, that's a shorter period, but unfortunately you have many more deaths and hospitalizations. The flatter one, that's better, but it lasts longer. So hopefully we're in the flattened section right now, but we don't know how long it'll be. And uh, another uh, chart that we've been showing, which is hospital admissions, uh, this chart uh, gives us an idea of what to expect in the future with regards to deaths and ICUs. Uh, we have seen over the last five days there have been more admissions or conversions to uh, COVID-19 uh, patients in hospital than discharges. Not a great sign. Uh, but what we've also heard, and I talked with a number of the hospital executives yesterday and today, was uh, many of these new cases are coming from group home settings. So it's not necessarily coming from the general population. That's a good sign for the general population with regards to preventing the further spread of the coronavirus, it's not a great sign for those that are in group homes. So we're working with uh, New York State Department of Health, when I say we, I'm talking about the Erie County Department of Health, is working with the New York State Department of Health to identify any place that may have an outbreak, whether it's a nursing home, a group home, a congregate facility, uh, to identify those individuals, those locations, determine if it's uh, like uh, individuals that work there in addition to residents, or if it happened to be a jail setting, is it, is it the employees at a jail in addition to any inmates? Uh, so we're working with the New York State Department of Health to address that. Uh, the New York State Department of Health is the one that is primarily responsible for the uh, supervision as well as uh, management, or not management, but uh, overseeing of these facilities. So uh, we have to work through them because they have the power to regulate uh, much more than we do. But the hospital admissions, we have seen continued growth on hospital admissions. Uh, though it does not appear that it's individuals in the general population that are making up the majority of these. There are individuals in the general population who are being admitted, but it does not appear that the new admissions, they are the majority of those. 
Now we'll look at the mortality data by age and gender. Remember how it was 55% of all cases were uh, female? Well, it's kind of flipped with regards to death. It's basically 55% of all cases are males that are, have unfortunately died in Erie County. And as you will note, uh, more than 51% of those that are 80 and above, uh, of those who died are 80 and above. So uh, this definitely is having a very negative impact on our senior population. Uh, combined, it's nearly 75% of those who've died uh, are over the age of 70. More than 50% of that of those who died are uh, our senior population. Uh, these are individuals who grew up during the World War II years. Uh, some of them may still have been the few that we have in our community that actually served in World War II or the Korean War, the greatest generation. Uh, unfortunately, this is having a tremendous negative impact with regards to our senior population. Our senior services department is monitoring this, keeping an eye on what's happening in nursing homes as well as uh, deaths that may be occurring and, and unfortunately are occurring in private residences. Uh, we do know that is happening with some of our senior population. Uh, so we're very concerned and that's why we stay home is to protect ourselves, protect our loved ones, including uh, our grandparents and for many people, great grandparents. Uh, who uh, served this country so well uh, throughout the years and now unfortunately are being uh, hit hard by COVID-19. Uh, you see it in the next uh, slide is a bar graph associated with it, which once again gives you a good idea that the vast majority of these deaths are individuals who are over the age of 70. <clears throat> so uh, that just is a, a recitation of what we just talked about. Now mortality death with regard, or mortality data with regards to race, and ethnicity. Uh, we have seen a leveling off of deaths uh, of individuals who are of people of color compared to those uh, that we saw earlier. Uh, we are getting closer to what is the actual population percentage of African Americans, uh, which is about 14%. They make up a, a about 20 or 22% of the deaths right now in Erie County. Uh, not too long ago, it was making up a third and that was really, uh, really concerning us that we had an outbreak uh, in the east side of Buffalo and other areas uh, that where there's a, a greater population of African Americans and uh, was uh, unfortunately going to have a, a tremendous impact on that community. We see that in other uh, uh, major urban markets across the United States where uh, people of color make up a, a disproportionate share of the amount of deaths. Uh, it is still more than what the population percentage for Erie County is. Uh, white population Erie County is about 80%. Uh, African American is about 14. Uh, Hispanic and Latino is about five. So we've seen less deaths in the Latino Hispanic community than when you normally would expect based on population data and, and still slightly more deaths in the African American community. And you can once again see it broken down by race and uh, gender there. <clears throat> uh, next uh, slide also is sort of talks about what I just mentioned, the percentage of the population. 80% white, 14.6% uh, African American, and how uh, Latinos make up 5.7% of the population. So we keep we track this data to have a, give us a better idea of those who are at risk. Uh, and and uh, unfortunately, every death is one death too many. Uh, but we track this and we share this with our partners so we understand where the areas of concern going forward are. Uh, next slide, once again, we're talking about a comparison between Erie County, New York, and Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, where Pittsburgh is in Cuyahoga County, Ohio, where Cleveland is. Uh, we still have more positive cases and deaths than both of those counties, even though we have uh, about 300,000 less uh, in population. Uh, Allegheny uh, County, Pennsylvania, where Pittsburgh is, has 1,059 cases of COVID-19 with 67 deaths as of yesterday. Cuyahoga County, Cleveland, 1,653 cases with uh, 64 deaths uh, and Erie County, uh, 2,284 cases as of yesterday with 177 deaths. Now people were saying, oh, you're probably not doing a fair comparison because they probably tested less. Uh, I do not know how many have tested in Cuyahoga County, Ohio, because they do not release that data. Unlike us, we're releasing testing data. They're not doing that in Ohio, only uh, positive results. But we do know in Allegheny, Pennsylvania, where Pittsburgh is, they've tested over 12,600. And we've tested as of yesterday, 9,100. So that is a little bit of a scary statistic because uh, those uh, populations are bigger to begin with. So you would expect to see uh, more COVID-19 in their communities. 
uh, at least as a case-by-case -case number, a raw number. But we are higher with regards to raw numbers. Uh, we are also higher with regards to per capita. So as you can see in this chart that's going to pop up on the screen in a second, uh, Erie County is the big blue bar and the larger red bar. Then you have Allegheny County, uh, Pennsylvania in the middle, and Cuyahoga County, Ohio uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, at least as I'm looking at it. And I just want to reinforce that uh, when people are making comparisons and saying, oh, we're not New York City, well, we are not New York City. We're not Long Island. We do not have the same outbreak there, but we are doing worse than what would be considered our regional peer group, which is Cleveland and Pittsburgh, uh, communities that are close to us uh, and uh, we know very well. Uh, so mapping, is a COVID uh, map is available. Our, our COVID map is, of course, at www.erie.gov slash COVID map. Uh, you can go to it any time of the day. Uh, it's updated a few times daily and get information on the amount of individuals who were tested. As of yesterday, it was 9,106. How many confirmed cases? As of yesterday, it was 2,284, though that has gone slightly up. The deaths, 177. And then we have a breakdown by town and by zip code. Uh, and in the bottom corner, you can see a graph that shows the the climb of cases on a daily basis. Uh, the case numbers continue to climb. Uh, we're not seeing a flattening of that is what you would see when the case numbers, the positive cases start to be reduced uh, dramatically to where we're getting to zero. Uh, we are seeing a growth. Uh, it's not as huge as it was earlier. Uh, so that's a good thing, but we are concerned. And as I noted earlier, we're gonna see a big dump of cases, positive cases later today as we finally have those quest numbers dating back to Thursday, 1,000 persons were tested that are not in this people tested number yet. That'll, that'll go later today. Uh, and then the uh, positives will be included, which will take our positives. Uh, I think it was uh, 2,350. So we'll be somewhere around uh, 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 2,500 when all is said and done. Uh, Erie County responds. We've been responding in so many ways. We talk about it daily. Uh, but we got a lot of things that we've been working on, and one of the things is addressing the economy. We know a lot of people are hurting, a lot of businesses are in trouble. That's why I created the Erie County Business Task Force, uh, working with our partners across the spectrum in the private sector and also not-for-profits. Uh, we've asked business owners to complete a survey that is online at the Buffalo Niagara Partnerships website. Uh, this impact survey closes this Friday. We need to hear from business owners. We need to hear from you as to what's going on with your business. And the only way to do that is for you to complete the survey. So please complete the survey. You see the link on the screen. Uh, and it will give us the tools that we need to, uh, so we can address your needs. Uh, our 911 Communication Center. Uh, I've been talking uh, in touch with our Commissioner of Central Police Services, Jim Jansowitz. They oversee the 911 Call Center and other facets of the local law enforcement. And uh, I, they gave us a report with regards to Central Police Services and the calls that are received at the 911 call center. Uh, emergency calls are down by about 10%. During the first few days of the crisis, uh, they were exceptionally high as people were calling the 911 call center for just basic information. Uh, we're very pleased that the public is using the COVID-19 info line at 858-2929 for health-related calls. In Buffalo, you can call nine, uh, 311. That's 311. Uh, for general information and outside of the city of Buffalo, you can call 211. So we want you to use these uh, partner call centers, so to speak, the county's call center for health-related questions, 311 in the city for general questions, 211 outside of the city of Buffalo for general questions. And they've also informed me that crime has decreased across Erie County, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, it's I, we'd like to hopefully keep it that way down uh, once we all return to normal business, but I am glad to say that our, our uh, Central Police Services has identified that crime has reduced across our community. Now, our 911 call center has uh, changed some of the protocols because every contact for a first responder uh, risks potential exposure to the coronavirus. We've had first responders, police, fire, uh, EMTs, uh, unfortunately uh, catch the coronavirus, contract it from probably someone who had it. So we're trying to reduce the amount of exposure to our, our first responders if you call 911. So new protocols are being put in place. Callers may be instructed to meet officers outside if they have the ability to do so. 
Uh, callers may be screened for COVID-19 symptoms while they are on the phone call uh, before an officer or other person arrives. And you need to listen to the instructions from the dispatcher, the call taker, because they are going to provide uh, accurate information to police, uh, fire, EMT, and they need to know your current situation. Uh, last week, unfortunately, was National Telecommunications Week, and we didn't talk about it. Unfortunately, that is, but it was a good thing it was National Telecommunications Week. Uh, the people that work in our 911 call center work very hard. There are a lot of the unseen heroes that are dealing with some serious uh, uh, issues, including individuals who are very uh, uh, going through traumatic situation because of COVID-19. So I just want to give a shout out to those in our 911 call center for the good work that they do every day to protect our community. Uh, domestic violence complaints. Uh, we've been monitoring this because we are concerned about domestic violence associated with people who are stuck at home and in tough situations. Uh, we have not seen an increase in arrests for do domestic violence. All of our law enforcement partners are working. Uh, we have not seen an increase in domestic violence arrests, but we have seen an increase in calls to domestic violence hotlines that exist. Now there's a working group of domestic violence uh, providers and protectors, so to speak, in Erie County. Uh, comprised of the Commission on the Status of Women, and I'm joined here in the back, you can't see her, but our Commissioner of the Department of Public Advocacy and the Executive Director of the Commission on the Status of Women, Karen King, is here. Uh, law Enforcement Advisory Groups, uh, the ECDA's office, the Erie County District Attorney's office, uh, they are out, they're working very hard. Uh, some of them may be working from home, but they're working very hard to address domestic violence uh, issues and complaints, because while we have seen a drop in arrests, we are about equal in arrests, I should say. Uh, we have not, uh, unfortunately, uh, seen a drop in calls. We've actually seen an increase in calls. Now, domestic violence complaints, uh, Erie County's 24-hour domestic hotline uh, is uh, here to help you. So we need you to uh, increase, uh, could you change the slide there so people can see it? The domestic hotline 24-hour, there we go. Hotline is here to help you. Uh, we are available 24 hours at the hotline at 716-862-HELP or 4357. So 862-4357 to talk to someone if you need to, if you need help with regards to a domestic violence situation. If you need shelter, if you're in a situation where you need shelter, uh, there is emergency shelter that's available at 716-884-6000. Uh, and if you are an immediate harm, you can call or text. You don't have to call, you can actually text. 911 and law enforcement will respond. Uh, some of our partners, including from the Erie County District Attorney's Office and others, uh, have some great videos that we are putting online so you can learn more about what can be done to prevent domestic violence. So you go to our site uh, after the presentation, you go to our uh, erie.gov slash COVID-19 page. Uh, you'll find some information there as well on, on how to address domestic violence as well as links to some great videos from our partners as to addressing domestic violence complaints in our community. Uh, the reopening of Western New York, very big topic. Everyone's concerned about it, as am I. Uh, as we all know, yesterday Governor Cuomo appointed Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul as his advisor on recommendations for reopening Western New York. Now, Lieutenant Governor Hochul and I have been in touch multiple times during the crisis. We've been sharing information with her. And we spoke last night at some length uh, with regards to what her uh, powers are with regards to reopening Western New York and what she's expecting from us. And I did share some of the latest data yesterday and we shared again with her and her staff this morning some of the latest data. Uh, and, and she uh, assured me that we will be working closely together on this important matter. As she noted, uh, we will not keep Erie County, Western New York closed any one day more than we need to, but we also won't open it up any day earlier until it's ready. And I think it's very important for the public to understand we all want to get back to business as usual, but we have to do it in such a safe manner, which will probably mean uh, a rolling opening of the community. There are certain functions that may return. They may return at a higher level than where they are today, but not at full level. Remember, we went in some areas from 100% to 75% to 50% to 25% occupancy. So we'll be having conversations as to whether or not we should increase occupancy up to 25%, up to 50%, uh, depending on what the nature of the business is. Uh, I thank uh, Governor Cuomo for his continued commitment of providing us additional supplies as we need them. And Lieutenant Governor 
of course, our, our own uh, Kathy Hochul from Buffalo, who's uh, working very hard behind the scenes uh, with partners to analyze the data to ensure that we reopen Western New York when it's safe to do it. Uh, and then finally, today is Earth Day. It's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Uh, and we want to remind everybody there's no appropriate time to litter on Mother Earth. We want to stop littering at all points. But always dispose of your PPEs, your personal protective equipment, masks, gloves, other things that you're using to protect yourself in the garbage. Don't throw it along the side of the road. Don't throw it in a ditch. Put it in the garbage. Protect Mother Earth. Protect the other individuals that then have to come and clean up that PPE, not knowing whether that person had been exposed to COVID-19 or not. So let's celebrate Earth Day every day. It's happy 50th uh, Earth Day to, uh, to our, everyone out there. Uh, but let's ensure we treat every day like Earth Day. And we do not litter, just to begin with, but please do not throw your PPEs on the road and parking lots. Dispose of them properly. You're only putting other people at risk, and it's really gross. So with that, uh, just we'll open it up to questions and, and, and from the members of the media. I thank them for their continued uh, participation in getting accurate information out to the public. Uh, and I most of all thank the public for the work that you're doing to ensure that we as a community get through this as best as possible because we are all in it together. With that, we'll open up to the questions. And the first question we'll, we'll start, I think we started from the top yesterday. So we'll start from the bottom today, WKBW, uh, Madison Carter. Madison, are you on? Actually, it's Jeff Russo today, County Executive. Uh, okay, Jeff, we're getting some really bad feedback from someone. If you're not, on. If you haven't been called, please mute your phone on your end. Okay, uh, Jeff Russo. I think we're all good now. Okay. Yeah, I think we're all good now. Hey, uh, I know the governor says it's all about testing and tracing, and I know you've said that that's been expanded in Erie County to every individual that's symptomatic, but what does more testing uh, county executive look like in Erie County? Will we see more private companies perhaps set up testing sites for the public? What will that look like at that expansion? Well, there's two types of tests, Jeff. There's the testing that is uh, the direct test to determine if you have coronavirus, COVID-19 at that moment, and then there's antibody testing. And antibody testing is only good a number of days or weeks after you had the illness when you've started to build up antibodies from your immune system. Uh, we need to do both sets of tests. We need to do the, con the tests continuing to determine if symptomatic individuals actually have COVID-19. Uh, but that won't actually, if you took a test and you're not symptomatic, uh, that may not show that you actually have any antibodies. We, it doesn't tell us whether you actually are positive or negative. If, if it comes, I should say it has antibodies. It can tell us if you're positive, just those types of tests. An antibody test uh, does not tell us if you have uh, COVID-19 at any particular moment, but it will tell us if you may have had it in the past. So we need to have antibody tests ramped up. We've got an order through Abbott Labs for a number of their equipment plus over 100,000 antibody test kits, but it has not arrived yet. Uh, if people are calling for an antibody test, uh, it has not arrived. And if you are symptomatic, you don't get the antibody test, you get the regular test. So if you're symptomatic, call 858-2929 to get the regular test. Uh, Next just, to follow, just to follow, okay. oh, can I just follow that up really quickly? Could yeah. we potentially see more private companies set up testing sites for the public? And what I mean by that is, for instance, Rite Aid is doing some drive-through self-nasal swab tests in a few states and in New York State, but apparently not in Western New York. Is that potentially something that could be done, or is that being done or being considered, County Executive? Uh, I am unaware of Rite Aid doing that locally. Uh, it certainly could be considered. I, I don't know if there's really a need for these other testing sites that are doing the symptomatic testing because we have the capability of doing it through our public health lab as well as our partners through Kaleida Health, ECMC, Catholic Health, uh, as well as doctor's offices. The antibody test is a different matter. Uh, that is something that is going to be large scale, but we also have to do contact tracing with those individuals. We've ramped up contact tracing in Erie County in, in anticipation for more positive regular tests, but also the antibody tests. Uh, we 
we're going to need as much antibody testing as we possibly can, uh, but it's a little different than the regular test. So uh, from right now, we're relying on New York State to do some antibody testing, and when we're capable of doing it, we'll announce it, and we'll have separate antibody testing locations. Okay, the Thank next... Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're Thank welcome. You. Uh, the next is uh, WIVB, Kelsey Anderson. Hi, Executive. Um, so I was just wondering, I know you just brought up those antibody test kits that you ordered. They're not in yet. Is there any update on when those will come in? And then what's the process for that testing? Can people call and get a test or will it be random? I know you said we'll have enough for about 10% of the population here in Erie County. Uh, we do not have them yet. We don't have a date, so we're hopeful we'll be getting them uh, within the next week. Uh, the, 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 the process will be announced when we, we, we're, we're ready to move forward. I don't want to say something today, because uh, I know what will happen is if I say you call, people are going to call right now thinking the test available. The test is not available. Uh, please do not call our hotline demanding an antibody test. We will announce the protocols for those testings, uh, the test of sites, so to speak, uh, when we have the testing available. Uh, WGRZ, uh, Emily Watkins, and Jeff Preval. Yeah, hi, Emily. Executive. Could you uh, comment, responding to Governor Cuomo's comments yesterday? about being on a plateau. Do you support that? Do you think that we're New York is on a plateau? Uh, our ICU numbers are flatter, and that's a good thing. Uh, so what I think we need to remember is that uh, it's going to change on a daily basis. Uh, we Our ICU numbers have flattened over the last two weeks. That's a good thing. Our hospitalizations, we've seen those tick up uh, to where yesterday in the report we gave was the highest amount of cases that we've seen. Uh, so it's it's going to change on a daily basis. Uh, we're, we're glad to see that the ICU numbers have plateaued, but we're also going to see a big dump of cases in the next uh, in the next few hours, and, and we don't know what impact that's going to have with regards to hospitalizations. We look more at hospitalizations as an accurate guide than just straight raw numbers on testing because the hospitalizations give us an idea of the amount of individuals in the community who may have it that are very ill. Because they can base a, 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 an examination, if we have 250 individuals in hospital here, they can do an, an, ex, an examination to determine what that means because you, certain have, you have a certain percentage that generally needs to be hospitalized of COVID-19. Uh, so uh, we, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that we're at the peak, but we have seen a plateauing of uh, ICU cases, and that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, next. There's also the theory about there being a, a surge in terms of hospitalizations, you know, coronavirus cases. You know, that's why hospitals put in their surge plans when they did. So uh, could I ask you whether you expect any type of surge to happen shortly or in the near future in Erie County? Well, we always anticipated our peak based on modeling would be mid-May, which means that there would be an increase in hospitalizations. We have seen a slight increase in hospitalizations lately, though we have seen the plateauing, so to speak, of the ICU cases. Uh, we are very worried about a surge. If we were to reopen like that, just snap the fingers and reopen, we would have a surge. I guarantee it. Uh, so that's why if there is going to be a reopening of Western New York, it's going to be based on... Uh, oops, I'm going to put you on mute now. Uh, if there is going to be a surge, it's going to be because we reopened too soon and there's more exposure in the community. So uh, we are very worried about a surge uh, that could potentially uh, just in incapacitate our hospitals uh, with regards to, uh, if not full beds, at least ICU beds. And that's a conversation I have quite often with hospital executives. Uh, next question to WBFO, Michael Desmond. Are you there, Michael? He's gone. Then we'll go to uh, WBEN. I think we have Brendan Kearney. Uh, no, Mike Baggerman here. Um, Mark, how disappointed are you that the federal government's uh, latest stimulus bill doesn't include funding for state and local governments? I'm very disappointed. 
Uh, I've had multiple conversations with uh, my colleagues across the country, wow. as well as our leadership, including uh, Chuck Schumer, who were fighting very hard to ensure that local governments uh, were protected. Uh, we know we're facing, uh, based on projections, a $100 million plus shortfall in our revenues. And while we are going to get additional assistance from the federal government to fight COVID-19, we do not get any assurance that that can be used to uh, address shortfalls. Uh, so I am very concerned. I, I at least was somewhat uh, happy to hear that the president say that they were going to sit down and now negotiate local governments. But it's not just Erie County, it's all governments that are facing shortfalls, especially in Erie County where they rely on sales tax so much. Uh, so uh, it needs to be addressed uh, because we're going to have to decimate services uh, or just completely use our piggy bank all in one fell swoop uh, and still have huge problems in the future. So the federal government needs to step up and continue to assist local and state governments uh, in a manner that uh, uh, is going to be expensive, but it's much better to do that than to have us have to just absolutely cut staff, lay more people off, and, and cut services that the public needs at this point. So there is still a large amount of optimism, though, that they will get the funding for local governments, just not this round, it would go to the next round? Uh, I've heard that uh, there is some optimism, though the Senate with Mitch McConnell seems to be dead set against it. I have no idea why. Kentucky's been hit pretty hard, but he doesn't really seem to care about you and I and local governments. Uh, but that's Senator Mitch McConnell. Uh, the president does, has given his word that there would be another round of negotiations. Uh, Senator Schumer has let me know that. Uh, and I know uh, Speaker Pelosi is, uh, is also uh, fighting for it, just like we are fighting for it in county government. And I hope that happens, because otherwise it's going to be pretty ugly on the local government front with regards to uh, the ability of our governments to provide services at the public's greatest time of need. Uh, next question to Aaron Tai of uh, Spectrum News. Hi, Mark. I uh, wondering if you have any data or have heard anything. Um, since New York Post started, has the county seen an uptake in overdoses or calls for overdoses? Uh, we announced that, I think, on Monday. I, I, I don't have the specific data, but the answer is yes, and I need you to go back through the, the presentation I did on Monday because it's, it's in that uh, presentation set. So the answer is yes, but the exact data was provided in Monday's presentation. Uh, Buffalo News, Aaron Bessaker and Sandra Tan. Um, hi, Mark, thanks. Do you have any theories as to why Allegheny County and Cuyahoga County um, are, uh, that we are so much worse off than them, particularly in terms of deaths? I mean, could it be that um, the COVID-19 infection curve is simply late getting to those communities? Um, I just didn't know if you had any thoughts on that. Uh, well, I know in Ohio they shut down earlier than New York, and so did some parts of Pennsylvania. Uh, so I think you'd have to look at the earlier a, a, a community shut down, the better they are. If you look at what was done in Washington, uh, the state of Washington and California, they had complete shutdowns before pretty much everyone else. They also had some of the earliest cases and they seem to be doing better uh, much better than New York in general I believe uh, Suffolk County or actually not Suffolk Nassau County New York uh, actually had more cases than the whole entire state of California so uh, you have to look at the times they shut down you also have to look at density uh, when it comes to New York City it's one of the most densest areas when it comes to Buffalo we're less dense uh, probably comparable to Cleveland and Pittsburgh I, I, I'm not exactly certain, other than we do know that they shut down something sooner, and they're still shut down in Ohio and Pennsylvania uh, than what was shut down in New York. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Ethan Powers, B News. Can I jump hey, in, Mark? Mark hey. to the Buffalo News. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, Aaron. Thanks. I, I just wanted to. Okay. Yeah, Mark. I just wanted to check in on the um, convention center plans. I don't. Is that? still pending? Is that even going to be needed anymore? Uh, I know you last time you said you were waiting for uh, approval on that. So just curious about where that stands. It's all going to be dependent on our hospitalization data. And right now the data does not show that we need it. Uh, we have a plan that's pending before New York State. If we saw a dramatic increase in our hospitalizations and ICU beds, then we would, we would seek the implementation of that plan. But right now, uh, based on the number of hospitalization or hospital beds that are available, uh, we, we, we 
are not in a situation where we need it at this point. Uh, Ethan. Hey, Mark. Thanks for taking our call today. Uh, just a quick question about the hospitalization data. Uh, you mentioned yesterday that the uh, hospital admission data showed it's going in the wrong direction. Uh, and today you mentioned that the ICU population is stable and that the uh, most of the new COVID admissions are coming from nursing homes, not the general public, and that this is you know, indicative of uh, successful social distancing. Just to get clarification, if we don't have an abundance of new cases from the general populace, that surely must mean we're headed in the right direction, correct? Well, it, it can mean a number of things. It also can mean, it mean we, that we've reduced the community spread. But remember, we're talking about a long-term process here uh, to get herd immunity, uh, which they say you almost have to have 60% of the population contacted to basically start building your herd immunity. So while we've reduced the community spread, that also means a lot of people haven't contracted it. So it's just going to be a longer process with regards to protecting the general public. And remember, I said when you, when you, when you, when you don't have any uh, social distancing guidelines in place, you see that spike where it goes up and it comes down real quickly. But when you have social distancing guidelines in place, and the stronger the social distancing, the flatter the curve is. So what we're seeing is we're seeing a, a, a curve like this, a little flatter but longer. So what we're worried about from a standpoint of opening up right now is there's a lot of people who have not been exposed to the coronavirus. So if we opened up tomorrow, uh, and there's many, a good portion of our population hasn't been exposed, they would get exposed, and then our hospitals would be flooded again. So we're weighing the, when do you open up and do you do it on a case-by-case a -case basis at a percentage of the business so that you protect as much as possible? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a double-edged sword. We don't want to see hospitalizations jump up, but we also know that the more people that contract it, the better as a community we are in the long run because we'll actually develop hopefully immunity. Unfortunately, the more people who contract it means we'll also get more people who are hospitalized and die. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a no-win situation in some ways. And that's what we're looking at right now is when can we safely start to reopen our community, knowing that doing so will also probably increase hospitalizations, but can we manage that? Can we manage the hospitalizations so that we're not uh, overloading our hospitals and in effect, uh, causing more harm than good. Uh, Thanks for the elaboration, Mark. Appreciate it. You're welcome. We'll go back down. Uh, Jeff Russo, are you still on? Do you have any more questions? Yes, I do, if I, if I could. Can I get your thoughts, County Executive? I, I know schools in the state are closed through May 15th. I know you have conversations on the county level often. What are your thoughts about schools and when you talk about a rolling reopening and doing so safely will schools and your your thought will they, will they reopen before the end of this school year I mean, we're already looking at may 15th what's your thoughts on that i'd like to be able to give a definitive answer but i really can't i think what we have to do is look at the data uh, the plan that was released by uh, the president through the cdc had basically a three-phased approach and if i remember correctly schools did not reopen until phase two uh, we're not even in phase one yet so i think it's important that we understand that uh, uh, the schools may not reopen this year i don't have the answer to that question uh, i do know that schools are are teaching their students there's uh, in their stu students have tasks and have homework that they're doing from home, but it's not what we'd want because we'd rather have them back in a school environment. Uh, I can't give an answer that says yes or no. They may reopen by the end of the school year, they may not. The school year may be pushed back until the summer. Perhaps they don't open until late May, but they decide we'll push the school year back so that the, the graduations and commencements, so to speak, occur in July. I don't know the answer to that question, uh, and that's why we're working with our partners to try to provide the best information to all so that when we do make that determination, uh, it's a determination based on data and science, not just gut instinct. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Kelsey Anderson, do you have any more questions from Channel 4? Yeah, one more question. Um, we've been getting a lot of phone calls and emails regarding the way these guys report the numbers in Erie County. A lot of people are disappointed. You can't see that number of recoveries anymore. I think it was, you know, a little glimmer of hope for people. 
Now, I know you've already addressed it, why you know you don't give those numbers, they weren't very accurate, but could you just explain again to people why you're not reporting that number, and then will it be coming back once we get any increased antibody testing? Uh, well, the primary reason why it, it is not being shown is it requires the individual to self-identify that they are recovered. And we think some people, because we have data to show it, may have lied. Uh, as well as uh, even if people didn't lie, they identified themselves as recovered, we then found out that some of those individuals were back in hospital with COVID-19. So the problem is, is the only way to identify that someone is truly recovered is to do a second test. And almost no one, to my knowledge, has had a second test. So it's, it's, it would be kind of a impro improper thing to tell the public that well, we've had 700 recovered when we really don't know that and we're relying on the individuals to provide that data and if the person says i'm recovered even though they're not so they can go back to work they're putting at risk other people so we did not want to put out a false uh, statistic with regards to actual recoveries now many other states are not listing recoveries other communities are not listing recoveries some are uh, if we can get to a point where we can do a second test on individuals to determine if the coronavirus is still in them, uh, then we could theoretically start identifying recoveries, but we would need uh, tens of thousands of more test kits because we'd have to retest every single individual who currently has it. And we still want to save the test kits for the people who are symptomatic uh, because remember, you, you can recover and be asymptomatic, but still have the virus in you. And there's a lot of people in this community who were con who contracted the coronavirus without any single symptom but they could still give the coronavirus to someone else so we just felt it was uh in our in our epidemiologists made the call that they thought it was inappropriate to identify recovered when we know that certain people actually were not recovered were identifying themselves as recovered based on the information they provided us and then we find out later that they're still sick and some of them actually were back in the hospital that's it's just in, in it's invalid data and we couldn't continue it uh channel two hi there steve brown jumping in on this one thank you very much for the opportunity in your opinion would the county maybe even the state have been better served at some point during all of this to have partnered up with one of these larger laboratory companies a class of lab tech or other in order to be able to do larger scale testing because of the apparent capacity that these companies have? Uh, well, I mean, it's a, it's a question that I think I could have a thousand answers, Stephen. Uh, one of the problems that we're seeing with Quest and LabCorp and uh, BioReference is they're not able to get results back in a quick amount of time. As we noted, uh, we just finally got this large dump of cases, or not cases, I should say, test results from Quest some of them dating back to Thursday because of problems with their delivery of it. Uh, so, I mean, you could always say if on a lot of things, uh, but uh, I don't know if it would have made a difference in the long run, other than it would have given us a, a better idea of how many people may have contracted it early on. But uh, I think it's fair to say that even Quest and LabCorp were not able to do any testing when we were first doing testing to our public health lab. Even the private labs didn't have the capability of doing that. And remember, if I don't have the test kits to give to anyone, it really doesn't matter who we're teaming up with. And for the longest time, we didn't have test kits. So even if I had the test kit, uh, I couldn't have given a test kit to Quest because I didn't have a test kit to use. Uh, no one on from WBFO? We'll go back to WBEN, any other questions? Uh, Niagara County, Mark, uh, is allowing some residents to use golf courses there, play around uh, with some limitations. Are you planning to have something similar in Erie County? Well, under the governor's orders, golf courses can be open if they follow proper social distancing guidelines. And I know there are golf courses in Erie County that are following them. I don't know anybody who would want to be out there golfing today considering how cold it is and it was snowing. Uh, Erie County Department of Parks is looking at uh, opening our golf courses uh, if we follow proper social distancing guidelines, uh, hopefully by May 1st. Uh, we would follow the guidelines that exist under New York State, which means no power carts. You have to walk the courses. Uh, you have to bring your own pull cart. We would not be renting pull carts. 
Uh, all facilities will be closed, including bathroom facilities. Uh, and there would only be an individual to confirm uh, your reservation. We would not be taking cash. Everything would have to be done by credit card or if you have an annual golf pass, an annual golf pass. So we're considering that, but we would not in all likelihood open until around May 1st anyway. That's just our normal protocol. And right now we're not looking to open because we've had snow. Uh, Spectrum, Buffalo, Aaron, do you have any more questions? Yeah, just one more for you. Um, so Governor Cuomo today talked a lot about contact tracing and how he's having epidemiologists downstate start to work across county lines um, to make sure that they're finding all of the people who came into contact with each individual patient. Um, have we started to do that at all in Erie County, work with any of the other Western New York counties on that? Uh, we've been contact tracing the whole time along. We have uh, many individuals working in the Department of Health under the supervision of nurses and epidemiologists from the Department of Health that have been contact tracing since case one. What the concern is, is contact tracing with regards to the antibody testing, because we're gonna be testing so many new people with regards to the antibody testing. What you wanna do is if you find someone who appears to have had the coronavirus in the past, because they have the antibodies for it, in other words, they contracted it, you then wanna find out the other individuals they live with, the people that they may have worked with. Uh, stuff like that so you can contact those individuals to find out all right you need maybe an antibody test because it's probable that you were exposed to the coronavirus so the the contact tracing that the governor was talking about was increasing contact tracing specifically addressing uh, the antibody Erie County just like all the other counties have been performing contact tracing on their positive cases because we have to by the law We've been doing that all along since day one. Uh, Buffalo News, Aaron and Sandra. Uh, yes, thanks, Mark. Um, you have your trend line chart regarding hospitalizations, uh, those in ICU and deaths for county residents is actually very informative. And uh, I'm wondering if it's possible for the county to post that raw data uh, on its website or, or somewhere, um, just because I, I know we and, and probably other other news organizations would probably like to replicate that chart, but right now we don't uh, have the ability to do that because we're actually missing some past dates. Um, so is it possible to post that information somewhere? Um, also, the Department of Health told us yesterday that they are no longer keeping a running count of the number of residents in that um, the Department of Health is keeping in quarantine. Um, I'm wondering if that information will still be periodically reported. Uh, the quarantine numbers are probably not from Erie County. Uh, we've gone from addressing issues with quarantine to the direct uh, isolation because quarantine is a big number it's also individuals who may have come in contact but do not have it or at least showing symptoms of it isolation is generally every individual who's tested positive uh, we, 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 we are keeping an internal track on that uh, the, the data with regards to the hospital numbers is based off of state numbers where our chart is coming from uh, we, I'd have to get authorization from the state to release that data. Uh, we've been, the hospitalization chart information, when we included deaths recently to make a comparison for some of the spikes downward to see if there were high deaths those days. That is not total deaths in Erie County on that day. Those are deaths that occurred in a hospital. And it may vary from the actual number of deaths that occurred in Erie County that day because if somebody died in a nursing home, a group home, or a private residence, it would not be included on that chart. Um, okay, it's just that right now we're having some difficulty getting that data from either the county or the state, uh, both the hospitalization, past hospitalization and past death data. Uh, death data we should be able to provide you. Uh, hospitalization data, I can, they, they've allowed us to share the trend lines, uh, but I, I don't know if I can share that data. We'd have to get confirmation because it's data coming from New York State. Uh, Aaron, did you have a question still? Yeah. Can I just piggyback on that? We're also looking for, you've, you've also been hosting uh, hospitalization, admissions, discharge numbers. Um, wondering if we could defect the, the actual numbers could be passed along as well. Uh, well, we'll look into it. It's the same thing, but I, 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 don't, I don't see why not, but it's really coming from New York State. So we have to get the information from New York State. 
Uh, and the final question then to Ethan Powers of B News. All set for today, Mark. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, I appreciate everyone uh, and uh, for staying and watching for the last hour as we gave an update with regards to the COVID-19 outbreak here in Erie County. Uh, I want to thank Karen Gambino, who's been providing the Deaf Access Services American Sign Language for you. Uh, we continue to work with our partners across the spectrum of government, the private sector, as well as the not-for-profit sector to address the issues of the COVID-19 outbreak in Erie County and Western New York. Uh, we, we see some positive numbers with regards to the trend lines, but we know we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, and that's why any opening and general reopening of, of all businesses in this community would not make sense. And then we would just drive up our hospitalization and death numbers. I wanna thank everybody for working hard to protect the greater community. As I've said before, we are our brothers and sisters keeper. We are all in this together. Uh, there's a, I posted last night, a, a uh, sign that was uh, posted across Buffalo in Erie County during World War I, and it said, Buffalo will see it through. And yes, we are gonna see this through. Together, we'll see it through so that we protect each and every one of our, our neighbors, our family members. It's the only way we are gonna see it through is if we do this together. That's why when I walk out or get up from here, I'm gonna put my mask on. I wear my mask to protect myself and also to protect you in case I have the coronavirus. I don't have any symptoms, but we know that asymptomatic people can contract it and not even know they have it and they have it. That's why it's important that you wear your masks. It's an order of New York State. And so I wanna make certain that everyone understands wear your mask when you go in public, especially if you cannot socially uh, practice safe social distancing. And then we will get through this together and we will see it through together. Take care everyone and until Friday, may you be safe and well. Happy Earth Day.